Welcome back uh, to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. Our next conversation goes to, of course, uh, more revelations from the Auditor General of the Federation's report. In the last couple of days, we've spoken about, you know, billions of Naira that have, you know, been misused or unaccounted for from the National Assembly and other ministry departments and agencies in government. This morning, we're talking about, um, you know, 3.22 billion Naira that has, of course, once again been declared missing or not accounted for. No paperwork to show that these, uh, you know, uh, that well, the, the Auditor General says they were given out to ghost contractors. Um, but not just that, 178,000 plus weapons, ammunition, AK-47s and the likes were also declared unaccounted for or missing by the police. And uh, we're going to be speaking this morning with Comrade Declan Ihekari. He is a national coordinator activist for good governance. Morning to you, Mr. Hekari. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Great to have you on the program. Which for you is uh, most shocking? Is it the 3.22 billion Naira that has been paid to ghost contractors with no paperwork to show anything was done with these funds or that there were any contracts, you know, um, um, you know actually uh, carried out? Or is it 178,000 um, AK-47s and other ammunition that have been declared missing, uh, also in the police force? Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, uh, we're, unfortunately, we're in a country where happens is that uh, we're in a country where people who are Well, we seem to be struggling with a uh, feed from Mr. Hekari's uh, end. And so we'll try to reconnect with him and see if we can get that conversation going. Um, you know, it's really just about knowing where we are as a country and what will be done. If you remember the early conversation earlier with uh, Mr. Chris Wandu, uh, the question was, what will happen next? You know, now that the Auditor General has declared that these funds uh, have been seemingly stolen or misused or misappropriated, what happens next? And also, uh, should this be great, uh, great concerns for a country that is fighting insecurity, that is fighting banditry and armed robbery and kidnapping and terrorism in different parts of the country, knowing that 178,000 weapons have allegedly been misplaced by police officers and by the Nigerian police force? How much of a worry should this be for the giant of Africa? Um, when do we get to, uh, you know, have a serious conversations about um, a serious conversation rather about, you know, who should be punished and who should be held accountable uh, for a weapon being lost? Every now and then, I, I spoke about this earlier. Every now and then, we hear about armed gangs attacking police stations and stealing weapons, or you know, attacking police officers and taking their weapons. But 178,000 is a staggering figure that should worry any country. And everyone should be, you know, questioning where these weapons have gone. In whose hands are they currently? And, you know, what threat does this pose to Nigeria as a country in the next few years? Um, and that's what we're going to be talking about this morning. And also, when 3.2 billion Naira has been paid to ghost contractors, according to the Auditor General, who should be questioned and who should be uh, made to answer these, uh, you know, these allegations? Does the Nigerian police force itself know that 3.22 billion Naira has seemingly been misused or misappropriated or even stolen from its coffers? And if yes, why didn't they act before the Auditor General's report? Does the Nigerian government really you know, have any concern or any interest in the fight against corruption? You know, like we said earlier, every now and then, it's 127 billion, it's 9 billion, it's 3.22 billion. Uh, it's, it's so much money, but there doesn't seem to be an equal fight against corruption when you hear these stories. If you remember also, somebody fainted during a Senate hearing until date. Uh, he has recovered from his uh, collapse and still has not been able to answer questions as to the misappropriation of NDDC funds. Mr. Ehekari, good morning once again. Yeah, good morning. Thank All right, you. kindly go ahead. I think we can hear you clearly now. Yes. Yes. Go ahead. Um, same question. Uh, which for you is more worrisome? 3.22 billion naira to ghost contractors, or 100 or 178,000 weapons missing? Yeah, both, both, both. As a Nigerian and as a patriotic Nigerian, both are worrying to me. Uh, and, and I'm sure it's also worrying to most Nigerians. Uh, 
for security agency, number one security agency in a democratic setting as Nigerian police, paying good contractors, and uh, also not keeping arms and ammunition handed over to it, is a very dangerous trend which should not be condoned by every single Nigerian. So I am worried by both instances, both the money and the arms that cannot be accounted for. Okay, so um, let's also ask, uh, you know, probe further. I mean, uh, is there a possibility that this amount of arms can actually just uh, go unaccounted for, be missing, as been stated? Uh, is there a possibility of that happening in a system? I mean, this is a very sensitive, highly sensitive, you know, uh, part of the society in every country, talking about the police first. Uh, Comrade Ehekari, can you hear us? Okay, so the question is, is there a possibility of having, you know, 178,000 uh, armed, you know, weapons going missing in a very sensitive, sensitive part of, you know, a body, a security body as the Nigerian police force? Okay, so 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 we see, we we seem to be having you know some uh, disconnect right there, or you know some poor connection with our guest. And as soon as we're able to reconnect with him, we're definitely having back. Uh, but you know, like we rightly mentioned, you know, in the course of the conversation this morning with this issue, uh, the only thing that can come to my mind are just questions. Questions that I'm hoping that we can get answers. First of all, uh, the police force is a very sensitive, highly sensitive, a body that's saddled with the responsibility of ensuring that, you know, there's protection, lives and properties are protected, you know, in a civil dispensation, I mean, in a civil society. And constantly we have queried the interference of the military in the affairs of civil rule. So uh, that already, you know, calls for a lot of concern. Now, for the police force, we also know that you have the police service commission who is also saddled with the responsibility of ensuring discipline and what have you. And I'm sure that there's an armory. When we were talking about the hashtag yes. answers, uh, we talked about the fact that, you know, before officers are going, there's a register where you have to sign in your weapons, you know, the one you're taking out. And of course, if you're coming back, there should be also a check. So at what point do we have these weapons, you know, getting out of hands? Right now, we, because we don't know where they are, we, we, yeah. we can't tell. They could be in the hands of, you know, dangerous elements Permanent. out there yes, who absolutely. are perpetrating crimes. All right, so it's good to have you back, um, Comrade Declan Ihekere. Can you hear us, please? Yeah, I can hear you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so my question now is, as sensitive as the police force is, is there a possibility of just having these weapons just missing, unaccounted? Yeah, I said it's very possible. When in a country where anything can happen, moreover, the Auditor General is somebody who must have enough information before making such statements. But my fear now is that you are bound to see a debunking of the statement, either from the police or from the Auditor General. But the fact remains that as of today, the country is so porous that you have people who are not supposed to carry arms are carrying arms. And you begin to wonder how those arms are coming into the country. Bearing in mind that our borders are being manned by security agencies. And so if such number of arms are being declared missing or unaccounted for, it could be possible that such arms are in the hands of those terrorizing us in this nation. So, like I said, the Auditor General is somebody who must have been trusted and tested to make statements that cannot be challenged. Uh, I mean, so, so if, whether, regardless of whether they deny, you know, these facts or not, uh, according to the, uh, uh, from what you've said, uh, whether they put out the counter argument or not, you know, it's still worrisome, you know, that uh, these weapons may be in the hands of criminal elements. There's, of course, been insinuations of corruption within the police force, um, you know, there's also people who have their own conspiracy theories as to how these weapons may have been lost. Um, but 
you know, how much of, 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 of fear should Nigerians have seeing that 178,000 weapon, uh, weapons have gotten maybe to the wrong hands? Uh, we are still dealing with a banditry and an insurgency and some of all of that. Um, should we be worried? Of course, of course. Of course, he has to be worried for such number of uh, weapons to be unaccounted for by the Nigerian police. The number one security agency in a democratic setting. I, I, I want to say that it, 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 it speaks volumes of, of, of the lack of insincerity of our people at the helm of affairs in this nation. I want to appreciate the Auditor General to have made this known to Nigerians. And uh, like I said, it's quite unfortunate, very, very unfortunate that we're hearing this and we're saying this. But however that is unfortunate, Nigeria is a place where you hear a lot of negative things, things that are not supposed to be had in a proper democratic setting. And it's coming at a time where we're supposed to have a party that ought to be based on integrity, on transparency, on accountability, and we're having this kind of news. It's quite a sad one. Uh, it shows it shows it shows that we're not saving this country, and that is the bitter truth. This also exposes, you know, the um, allegations, you know, of corruption within the police force. Um, every now and then we question how much money is budgeted for security and why it doesn't seem to be in any way effective. Um, the police might argue that they don't get enough money, but when you still hear that while they have that argument, 3.22 billion naira, according to the Auditor General, is, you know, has also been paid to ghost contractors by the same police. Uh, should also, you know, somebody be made to ask questions? And the Inspector General of Police, the Police Service Commission, and some of all of those uh, should also be aware that there is some corruption in their force and nothing seems to be done. Yeah, uh, the question you asked is a very good question. Uh, but you begin to ask again, how many top hierarchy people in this country have been called for questioning who has been jailed or interrogated for misconduct? The answer is no. Most of these people that are supposed to be called for interrogation are highly connected. They are above the board, they are untouchable. So you now begin to ask, who is to interrogate? Even if they are interrogated, what is going to be the outcome of interrogation? We're in a country where people have been taken to court for, for things that have gone wrong and for more than 20 years they are still in court. You should not also forget the fact that the current IG now is a new IG. How many IGs are you going to invite? to answer questions that are related to this development. So, so it's, a worried, it's a very worrisome situation. The Auditor General should be able to stand right at this point in time. And like I said, before such statement was released, I am very sure that the Auditor General must have done the proper work. But be that as we be, we're in Nigeria. But my prayer is that we will get to a situation in this country where God will give us God's hearing people, God's hearing leaders, who will understand the plight of the people and who will lead the people by the understanding of the terms of democracy. Unfortunately, we are not getting that at this point in time. And that's why we're hearing this kind of news. I am worried. At the end, nobody might be invited. I'm very sure of that. And if they invite somebody, I'm also worried that nobody will prosecute him. Okay, but um, just as we're coasting it down now, uh, what would you say is the implication of having unaccounted firearms, you know, somewhere in thin air for us right now as the people in the midst of uh, the fight against insurgents? Coming in, please. I'm asking that what would you say is the implication for having unaccounted firearms, that number, uh, somewhere that we don't know? What does that mean for us now? And what's the implication of having these firearms out there in space? Yeah, thank you. If you're saying, you're saying that we don't know where the firearms are, 
I think I would say we know where they are. The firearms, if truly they are missing the way it's being mentioned now, of course, they are, they are, they are with the bandits. The firearms are with those terrorizing this nation right now. And that is why you find a situation in the, in the northwest and the north central that Nigerians are not sleeping with their two eyes closed. You now begin to wonder where all these things are coming from. Now, you begin to see a situation in the southeast of Britain where unlicensed Nigerians were armed and they were taking fire armed with the Nigerian army and Nigerian police. So, 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 I am aware of where those arms are. Nigeria today is so porous that people are not safe, security wise. And so, if this revelation is coming at this point in time, it betrays the fact that most of the insurgents we are hearing today, most of the bands we are hearing today, are being armed by those unaccounted arms and ammunition. However, it behoves on the federal government, as Mr. President, to actually go deep into this revelation. But to me, I am worried. I'm seriously worried. Well, um, how do we move forward as a country? Uh, what would you expect? You know, you just mentioned that, you know, it's left for the federal government to you know, look deeper into these investigations and to, into the Auditor General's report. Uh, but uh, you also mentioned earlier that, you know, you, you don't expect that a lot will happen or, you know, anything of that sort will happen. You know, and so how do we move forward as a country if we keep hearing these things and <coughs> taking, uh, taking, you know, almost no action? Um, and of what yeah. use really is, you. is the Thank Auditor General's report? In the face of the insecurity in this country, Nigerians as a nation and Nigerians as people have been moving forward. You have two kinds of Nigerians. You have the bourgeoisie, the cabal, who are well secured. And you have the masses who are secured by God. And so you find out that most Nigerians who are in the draft of the masses always trust God for their security. Why the other side, who are the, the bourgeois or the Kaaba, have put their hope and trust in their bodyguards and those that secure them? So with that development, you find out that Nigeria will keep on going the way it's going, the way it's going, until one day that God will give us our leader, our leader, who will lead this nation and lead this nation very well. Unfortunately, we will be practicing democracy. But to me, what we have today is just a republic. It's not truly a democracy. If it is, with this revelation now, heads will have been ruling. I can assure you of that in a proper democratic setting, where democracy is being fact, with this revelation, I am sure as of today, people will have been invited for questioning, and Nigerians will have known those that have been invited for questioning. But before you know it now, the carpet will cover the whole story, and you will not hear anything about it again. It has turned to be a country where every day you wake up, you hear one story. The next day, another story comes up and cover of the, the first one you had. But it's quite unfortunate that we find ourselves where we are today. Oh, well, um, finally, uh, can you quickly just, you know, tell, you know, from your perspective, you know, you, you're a, a national coordinator activist for good governance, you know, so I'm sure you must have, you know, paid a little bit of uh, attention or even a lot of attention to the mentality of uh, the average Nigerian. And like you just mentioned, we move on very fast from issues. Um, can, you, can you tell us exactly why that is? Why is the average Nigerian so quick to move on from stories like this that should normally shake a nation? Uh, the stories of death, murder, you know, you know, villages are wiped out. There's corruption, you know, at, a, at staggering, you know, levels. 
but it's still the, the, the average Nigerian just moves on. So can you share with us what, what's the mindset of the average Nigerian that these things don't seem to bother them anymore? Yeah, thank you. I'll give you an instance. When a baby is crying and the father or the mother are not there to ask the baby to be quiet or to, 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 to calm down, you find out that at the situation or at the point, the baby will stop crying by, his, by himself or herself. That is the situation where most masses in this country find themselves. Those that are supposed to give us understanding of how things are being run in this nation, they are not there for us. So you find out that Nigerian masses on their own have factored out how they want to live their lives. And that is why Nigerians have their own personal security guards. They have their own world class system. They have their own personal electricity system. They have their own personal educational system. And so, those things are supposed to be from the federal government. But they are not getting it. So, Nigerians have made up their mind to move on. They have made up their mind to move on. So, but one thing I'm sure of is this it cannot continue this way. It will get to a level. Where God in his infinite mercy will intervene and give us good leaders. Unfortunately, 2023 is just around the corner. Nigeria will go out again and vote. Voting again who is going to lead us to the promised land. Nigeria is a blessed nation that has got everything humanly possible, material possible, to be greater than any other country in this nation. But unfortunately, we're getting people who are not leading us well. So you are bound to see Nigerians moving on. They go to churches, they go to mosques, and uh, they get solace from their pastors who tell them, oh, your reward is in heaven. And so you find out that uh, they have less concern about what happened to them in the country. And that's a bitter thing. Well, um, we, of course, would like to hear more from the Auditor General's office and hope you know, that the current administration does take these reports seriously so that we know the actual need of an Auditor General of the Federation. Yeah. If not, then, you know, he may as well, we may as well close down that office. Uh, Declan, uh, Comrade Declan Nihekari, thank you so much for your time this morning. Thanks for joining us and for speaking with us. We wish you a great day ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, and we appreciate it. And God bless Nigeria. All right. Well, that's the much we can take at this point in time. We hope you enjoyed, you know, every bit of the conversation. And if you missed out on any part of it, it's okay to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Plus TV Africa and subscribe to YouTube at Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. I am Messi Boko and uh, do have a great day ahead. And I am Osaogi Ogbowan. Bye now.